Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. Now over the last few years I've been trying to make the Ender 3 fully wireless. And with the Ender 3 v version 3 SE, that slipped up a tongue nicely there, um, I've managed to make it very, very wireless using Octoprint. Now Octoprint's been around for ages and ages and ages, but now it's compatible with the Ender 3 version 3 SE. I can make it beautifully, beautifully wireless. It can be off your laptop, you can do it off your computer, you can do it off your mobile phone, anywhere in the world. And it's very, very simple to set up. Now I've put off basically doing a how-to video on this because there's loads of them, but I thought with the version three coming out and with the fact that I've just done two videos on how to basically connect to your computer using a cable, I thought, hey, let's do a video showing how to connect to your computer using wireless. And it's much more simple than you'd think. So let's jump in and all you need is Ender 3 version 3, a Raspberry Pi 4, a USB-C cable, and a nice case to put your Raspberry Pi in so that it's nice and cooled. This one is uh, passive cooling, so you don't need a fan or anything. It just uses heat pads and the heat is distributed through the aluminium case or aluminium case if you're watching in America. They're the same thing. So let's get on and make ourselves a fully wireless Ender 3 version 3 SE printer using Raspberry Pi, a printer, and Octoprint. Let's give this a try. Okay, so the first thing you need is an SD card and an SD card reader. Pop those in your PC and uh, load it up. Now open up the latest version of Raspberry Pi Imager. This bit of software just allows you to create uh, images that the Raspberry Pi can read. And I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, so we'll give that a click. Uh, the operating system, I'm going to go down and you want to choose, where is it? Other specific uh, purpose OS's. Give that a quick click. And you want 3D printing. And you want Octoprint. Give that a click and you want to choose the stable one. And there we go. And then just choose the storage device you want to use. And then just click next. And then go to edit settings. Now you're going to open the advanced section by basically clicking Control Shift X or by clicking the uh, settings gear button. You'll see it there. It looks like a cog. Give that a click and it'll open it up or press Control Shift and X. Then we're going to configure your Wi-Fi options. So set your SSID, set your password and your Wi-Fi country. And if you want to change your system password, basically set username and password by entering a new username and password where you can see I put my uh, username up there. Uh, this ain't the password you're going to be using basically to log in um, to Octoprint. It's basically just the one you're going to be using um, if you basically have to log in to your Pi via SSH, um, should you ever need to. You won't need to in, in uh, this tutorial. You've got to change your location and you can change your host name, but uh, that's completely optional. I wouldn't mess around with that. Right. So with that done, uh, click save and install. And that'll install Octoprint onto your SD card. Then remove it from your computer, pop it into the Raspberry Pi, and we're ready to set up the Raspberry Pi and connect it to the printer. So, yep, we've got a cable running from my Ender 3 V3 around the back here and sitting next to this other cable here, which I've got plugged into the mains so I can power my Raspberry Pi, which I have already set up here and put into its little thermal case so that it is ready to go. Okay, let's get this plugged in. And with the magic of editing, there we go. So yeah, I've got the power supply plugged in and I have got it plugged into the printer via my USB-C cable right there. And you can see the red and green lights flashing, which means that it's doing its thing and it is loading. I've got the power plugged in down there and this cable goes all the way around the back, around the side and plugs straight into the side of the Ender 3. So yeah, we are ready, pretty much ready to go. Just turn on the Ender 3. Wait for that to boot up. 
There we are. Now you won't need that little uh, panel because you'll be doing everything from your computer, so that panel will stay static. And yeah, you can see that the access light is blinking happily there, so that means it has connected to the network and it is ready to run a print. All you need to do is open up your browser and put in the address you can see on screen here. And that will take you straight to uh, Octoprint and allow you to access uh, your Raspberry Pi containing uh, Octoprint. It's that simple. Now at this point you might see a warning at the top that says not secure. That's basically just your browser not recognizing it. Um, if you give it a click and give it permission to access it, you'll have no problem at all. Also, please refer to the OctoPy readme file and the how to use it file if you get stuck here, but you shouldn't have any issues with that. The first time you log in, you're going to basically put in your username and password that you set up earlier. And then once that's been put in, you'll be able to get straight into OctoPrint. And it will look like this. Isn't it beautiful? Now, one of the first things you want to be doing is uh, loading up some G code. And what you can do is use your slicer slice some g-code so basically it has a g-code file the uh, file you want to use you can then store that on your computer and you can access it by clicking upload then just click around go to wherever you saved it in my case i saved it to downloads and yep click on it there we go i'm going for gingerbread man and that will load it straight to your uh, octo print session here and then you can copy that across to your printer and get it to print directly. And with print clicked, you can see the temperature will rise here, the hot end will heat up, as will the bed. When it gets up to temperature, the whole thing will start printing again. And you can monitor it via several of the tools here. You can go to terminal and you can check out all of the uh, incoming commands that your printer is receiving. You can go to control and you can basically change all of the uh, settings for the controlling of your printer so you can get to go to home you can get it to go up down left right x y z and all that and you can just watch your print slowly forming and the best place to do that is via the g-code viewer and there we go you can see it printing away happily there and here we go look at that you can watch as your uh, print is slowly slowly created on the print bed on your the printer and monitor it in real time on your mobile phone or on your uh, laptop or on your home computer and yeah it's quite mesmerizing actually watching this thing printing along and just nice to know the thing's actually going and there's no issues and nothing has happened with it it's printing along happily look at the little fella there in all his gingerbread glory now as this is just a server website you can log in via your mobile phone which is another really really cool thing you can do the user interface looks exactly the same. You just type in the uh, IP address and yep, you can monitor your print and uh, change all your settings via your mobile phone. And see, so it's exactly the same all over this um, app. Um, I'm doing this via Chrome. I can pause, I can print, I can cancel, I can load other G code from here. I can see that it's gonna take 40 minutes. Uh, it's been going for eight minutes so far. And it's printed uh, about 70 kilobytes already. So you can upload, you can create folders. It's just exactly the same as you would expect. I can also see the temperatures there. And also I can just click on here and just to let, yep, I'm absolutely fine with using um, a large uh, bit rate. I wouldn't recommend doing this for using your um, mobile phone tariff. I don't recommend doing this if you are using Wi-Fi. But yeah, you can log in anywhere in the world and monitor how your print's going. In this case, I can see my gingerbread man is printing along happily there. And uh, first layer of his head is going down nicely. And with that done, that is a 3D print done wirelessly from your Ender 3 version 3 SE. And yeah, this is by no means an exhaustive tutorial. This is a basic, hey, let's get your Ender 3 SE printing wirelessly from your computer or from your phone. And yeah, you can do all kinds of wonderful things. But uh, yeah, once you've done this basic tutorial, go out there, find logins, find plugins, find extra bits of software, find bits of hardware you can plug into it. You can put temperature gauges on it. You can put time-lapse cameras on it. You can do all kinds of wonderful things. 
And yeah, this is just the start. If you do this tutorial, you can do pretty much anything you want to. But yeah, hopefully this is one step up from basically running a uh, cable from your PC to your Ender 3. With Octoprint, you can now basically run it off your phone, run it off your laptop, run it off your computer, log in anywhere and monitor, change, adapt, modify the print, mid print wirelessly, which is absolutely wonderful. And yeah, this guy turned out lovely. Of course, my daughter insisted on painting in purple before I finished the video. So uh, there goes my consistency and <laughs> continuity. But hey, thanks so much for watching. Now, all the links for the software I use are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching 3D Printed Soup. Stay happy, stay safe. Keep up to printing.